So during the pandemic, some of my friends who have chosen more profitable professions than I have were actively seeking to buy a house with a garden. However, this was quite a difficult endeavor because everybody had the same idea. Everybody suddenly thought that now that we're all cooped up in our little apartments during the lockdown and shutdown in Switzerland, we would be better off having a little backyard or little garden for our ch children to run wild in. And because almost everybody had the same idea, the price of properties with gardens went through the roof. And it was very difficult to try to outbid the highest bidder and get the house of your dreams. So as you can imagine, as a philosopher, I do not have the spare change to participate in these games of outbidding. However, what I do get to do is ask the pesky philosophical question, why? Why do we desire gardens and why do we garden at all? If you're new here, my channel is all about taking questions from everyday life and addressing them with insights from research and humanities, especially philosophy. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, please consider subscribing so that you're up to date for the newest videos. Gardens have a special role in many of the world's great religions. For instance, in the Bible, it is said that God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And it says in the book of Genesis, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Buddhism, the garden is not considered paradise as such. However, it does play an important role since Buddha gained nirvana or enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. And many Buddhist monasteries hold the garden in high regard. Now, why is this so? It can be argued that the idea of the garden is to mediate between the human and the non-human world. When we're in the garden, we have the ground under our feet and the starry sky above us. We are exposed to nature in a way that is pleasant and hospitable to us, differently from the way we would be exposed to it if we were in a jungle or in a desert. We are at home in nature and in harmony with it. And this is perhaps the primordial idea of this kind of original paradise that is described in many myths of the creation of the world. Gardens enable us to experience nature in a very safe and comfortable way. As the poet Ezra Pound has written, the Japanese garden designer creates a theater for the wind to speak. So the idea is that in a Japanese garden with all the reeds and wind chimes, you experience wind in a more articulate, more clear way than you would if it were just howling around you. It would speak to you in a different register. In Japanese, the word for garden is tein, which means control and wilderness. So the garden is a way to experience wilderness in a controlled way. Some might even say that the garden represents wilderness. This is especially the case with the Central Park that was built with the intention of putting on display American wilderness in the middle of the city. So perhaps it is precisely this notion of the wild that gives us a clue for why people desire gardens in a time such as this when we are constrained in our movements in an effort to contain contagion. Many people were contained in very small apartments during, during the lockdowns um, that we have had worldwide. And having this outlet of a garden is a way to counteract this kind of constriction. It is a place where the wild things are, where children can run wild. And the garden affords us the possibility to escape the monotony of the quarantine. For instance, when we encounter the unexpected hedgehog or squirrel or in tropical countries, a monkey. So while we do live in these synthetic containers that are our homes in the city, our houses, our apartments, gardens provide a kind of an outlet where we not only experience nature, but we experience ourselves as nature. <laughs>